One of the best things you can do as a parent for your children is to put them in sports. Data shows it not only improves their physical health, but it also improves their mental and psychological health. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the five best sports that you can put your kids in. You know, it's another stat to look up, Doug, is the, I, I forget, um, there's a correlation with their GPA and also yes. getting in trouble, like discipline mm-hmm. yes. and, and like, like. I forgot what the what the stat was, but it's 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 significant. You know what's important about this uh, this episode of this topic is that there was a period. It's it's turn it's changed now. Um, it's reversing, but there was a period there where physical activity and sports was de-emphasized. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, they started cutting funding and reducing access to it because it was all about STEM, right? Science and and mm-hmm. math and you know that kind of stuff. Um, and they were switching out the time, like less time playing, less time playing sports, more time doing these other things that are quote unquote more important. And what we're finding now was it was a big mistake. It was yeah. a major mistake. Oh, yeah. Because that and the arts program. That's GPA, yep. Doug. Well, show me also like crime and fighting and like uh, like misbehaving. Right. So GPA was what, 2.7? Yeah, 2.7 was the average. And then with playing sports, it's over three. Yep. 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 So there's that. And by the way, that's not the, so sport 2.0 is the minimum, which is interesting, right? right? So sports have most high school sports have a minimum of you have to carry a 2.0. So, it, but their average is much higher. Their average is higher uh-huh. anyways, right? So they're averaging over a 3.0 yep. uh, playing sports. But there, I've also seen more with like, like misbehaving and like crime and things like that too. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the data is um, what's interesting about the data is for a long time, we thought that sports for kids was really just about being active. So we connected physical activity. Like, oh, they just got to, it's, it's exercise. That's all it is. And regardless of what they play, it doesn't make a big difference unless they become a professional athlete. And so they just started reducing um, access to it and cutting funding towards it. But what we're finding now is, yes, of course, sports uh, contribute to physical health. And that's quite clear now, especially with how inactive kids have become. I mean, when I first became a trainer, um, type 2 diabetes was called adult onset diabetes because only adults got it. You developed it through poor lifestyle habits, but so many kids started getting it, they changed the name. And that's where we're at now. So definitely, there's definite physical benefits, but now we see in the data that there's tremendous psychological and mental and societal benefits to children being in sports. So it's not just about moving the body and being physical. It's about, it's so much more than that. It's a crazy microcosm for so many different things, for social integration, for leadership, for, uh, you know, being able to work with other people that are difficult for having obstacles that you have to overcome. Like there's so many like introductions of, um, challenges and things at real time that, um, these kids need to, uh, figure their way out of and be able to, uh, account for and also practice ahead of time for, which, you know, leads to the work. You see that translate into their actual competition. And so they learn a lot about not just their, their physical abilities and their capabilities, but also too, like it forms and shapes, uh, their ability to handle a lot of challenges in life. Oh yeah. Hard, hard work, yeah. sacrifice, delayed gratification, um, overcoming adversity. There's so many things yeah. that they're, they're getting, you know, and not to go off on a, ta- a different tangent, but this, I was just asked by a, a soon to be dad, you know, like, uh, like different dad advice that I was given. And we were going, and one of the things that caught him off guard that I had said was, and oh, don't let him wear shoes for like the first few years of his <laughs> life. Right. And I just think it's, there's so many misconceptions around uh, kids and kids' health and sports and activity. And to me that this is connected, even though we're talking about sports today, it's just that we're so unaware of what we're doing to them by, as soon as they're born, slapping these, you know, two inch soles on their, on their feet. When you have all these nerve endings on their, uh, uh, that are at the bottom of their feet and you completely are, it's like putting a cast yeah. on them and then expecting them to be grounded and connected to the ground. Yeah. Well, along those lines, uh, the brain, uh, develops <clears throat> through lots of input part of the ways that it develops and movement and skills that are required to throw a ball, catch a ball, to run, jump, climb, turn, Mm -hmm. twist, not fall, fall, get back up, that kind of stuff that develops the brain. It develops the brain in very important. It's It's interesting because scientists for a long time now have identified that play is extremely important for the development of mammals. We see this in all animals, dogs and cats and monkeys and whatever. 
that when they're a certain age, the them playing is not just fun. It's, it's important for the development of the mammal. Mm -hmm. For some reason, we've like discredited that or taken that out of the human equation, which is insane. It's extremely important for uh, developing, developing skills, societal skills, um, and just your ability to navigate the world. And you mentioned it being a microcosm. It is. You can play an entire game and essentially in that game learn many lessons that may take years in life yes. to learn yes. that you have learned in just one game. That's the thing. It's like an incubator, right. you know, for a lot of uh, testing, improving, uh, you know, the uh, just any uh, skill and concept about like what you're capable of doing. So today's giveaway maps starter. This is a beginner training program. If you want to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale on some workout programs. MAPS Performance is half off, and our Extreme Fitness Bundle of workout programs is also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. For me, I, I just get really passionate about the sports in general because I think that um, – People have abandoned sports for someone, and I, I went back in and coached, and I was just surprised at like how little uh, participation was happening uh, across the board. And I know there's a lot of factors out there uh, where there's lots of information about how the risks have increased for certain activities, how you know what we're seeing with like, is that what you blame it on? Do you blame it more on that? I blame a little bit of that. I blame a little bit of. It, Honestly, a lot of bubble taping and a lot of helicopter parenting and a lot of, um, you know, unwillingness to allow kids to uh, struggle um, and and parents getting over involved. I, I, I agree. That's, see, that's interesting because I think I don't see it as much on the parent side as I see it as on the kid side of not even wanting to do it. I see more of that than I see a parent well, going like, oh, that's the environment though. That's a good point too, because now I, we're competing with super games and yes, stuff. Yeah. Super and computers video and games. social media. Well, yeah, like, that's yeah. another, that's a huge, another piece. Like, yes. it, like sports was such a huge outlet for yeah. me as a kid. Like, well, was there I, other option? Stay at home and right. color. Yeah. yeah you know, and and even when, even when the introduction of video games came, they still were not as immersive as they are right. now. And we didn't have social media to interact. Like, so it wasn't like I could, like I couldn't play with my friend at his house while I was at my house. Right. And it just didn't work that way. So right. I, I, I see more kids opting to not play. Yeah. So you have this combination of the helicopter parenting, the fear mongering around like things like football and concussions and that stuff. But I think it's, it's even more so the kids like, well, aren't even asking or aren't even wanting to play. So we, we've seen this now for the next few, uh, the last uh, few decades, at least. Um, and this is just to kind of back up what Justin said. Like one of the most important skills that you can, and we'll go through all the different skills, but one of the most important skills you learn from competition as a kid is both how to win and how to lose. Yep. It's very important to learn how to lose and how to win. Now, how to win, you need to learn how to be humble, how to be grateful, um, how to continue to be motivated because you can lose motivation if you just, you know, you, you win and then, okay, now what do I do next type of deal? How to treat others as if you beat them in competition. Very important skill. A lot of people don't realize that learning how to win is important. Learning how to lose is very important as well because in life you're going to probably lose more than you win. So when you lose, how do you deal with it? How do you process it? Do you beat yourself up and quit and never try again or do you try to improve yourself? What does this mean that I that I lost this game? And, and what are the things I can look at within myself? And parents oftentimes, and I've seen this last three decades, have eliminated that ex extremely important skill by either A, not letting kids keep track of the score, which is ridiculous because they do anyway, mm -hmm. or giving away prizes and awards to everybody just for showing up. And I know that, you know we hear people talk about that all the time, like it's the worst thing in the world. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, but I do think uh, a big part of this is not realizing the value in play and in sports, we just look at it and we take for granted why we've been doing it for millennia. And we say, oh, it's just a physical activity. Well, they'll just get that anywhere else. It's like, no, no, no. There's just because we've stopped examining the, the value of it doesn't mean there's any value. And we're starting to realize now just how important it is that well, kids go and compete and, and, and play in organized type games. Also mm -hmm. the value of, of not winning. Right. And losing and not getting the award. And like, there's it's the best value. Yeah. So that's the thing that the, the trophy for everyone thing really hurt us so bad as a society. It was that aspect. It's not so much that the kids all got some participation trophy. It's that 
there's such great the, lessons in life. Mm -hmm. with, you know when they're going to learn it later when it it's, it's means more, right? And it, like I didn't get hired, right? And so you know the the ability to get back up that you know, and even too like just the the unfortunate part of the politics of sports and it's yeah. unfair sometimes and the ref made a bad call right. and I lost because like that's fucking the coach life. doesn't like me even though I'm the best player. That's or, right. Yeah. That's fucking life. You're gonna you're gonna do you're gonna find yourself at a job one day. And uh, someone's going to get promoted, and you deserve to get promoted. Yeah, absolutely. you know what I'm saying. And so, what do you do? Do you just do you go and quit because of that, or do you find a way to pick yeah. yourself back up? And, and I just think that's the part that we lost. Some other skills that are important to learn, uh, and this is just as a developing human, is how to both lead and also how to follow. Those mm -hmm. are both extremely important. Now, you know, when I say that, I think people think to themselves, "Oh, there's some leaders, and then there's people who are followers." Almost everybody, yes, people do fall into one of those categories, but everybody at some point is going to have to lead or follow. So yeah. this is just true for every human. Now you're going to do more of one or the other, depending on the kind of person you are or whatever, but it's important because following is how you learn from other people. Does that mean, so if, unless you think you know everything all yeah. right away, this is a skill you need. This Now we all know that person who gets hired at the job, who does a terrible job learning from other people. Nobody wants to work with that person yeah. mm -hmm. who doesn't know anything, but yet wants to come across like they're the boss. And then there's that, and then there's the ability to lead, to be able to take charge and take responsibility. You learn this playing organized sports. You learn when you need to follow, when you need to lead, and also the value of both. One isn't necessarily better than the other because it's the team that wins or the team that loses. Yeah, and it's it's mainly like being ready for either one of those roles and, and acknowledging that, you know, it's my time now. I, I need to do something with this ball and lead this team or I need to pass this off because this player is going to have the best chance for success for us right now. And it's it's really about the team itself as opposed to the individual. And yeah. that's, that's another big, again, with team sports, and we'll get into like there's value in individual sports as well. Uh, but I think from from a team perspective, um, you you learn quickly like what your role is, but also too like that role can change, and you just need to be ready to always adjust. No, the stuff you, a lot of what you guys are talking about are the social and psychological pieces that it brings. But the point of me bringing up the whole barefoot thing was there's there's a physical element that is so important that I feel like we're losing that. There's more to that, Adam, because uh, just to back you up, there is a window of learning that you have as a child that you lose when you get older. Yes. So if you don't learn, for example, learning languages, this is always the example I use because people can get this one, right? If you learn four languages as a child, you'll speak all of them fluently with no accent. Mm -hmm. You can speak Spanish, Italian, you can speak you know, Chinese, you can speak English. If you learn all of these as a child, all of them will sound without an accent. They'll sound just like the way you learn them. Mm -hmm. Now you do this as an adult, you can learn all of them, but your primary language will be the one that doesn't have an accent. The rest are going to sound, you go to speak Mandarin and they're going to know, oh, you speak English as your primary language. Well, your processes are much more hardwired. Yes. Like you're more pliable as you're growing up and developing. So, so this is a good opportunity. That's right. So your example of the, like not wearing shoes, like if you walk around barefoot as a child, you're, the dexterity and the control and the connection you have with your feet I mean, if you don't do that when you're a kid and you wait till you're an adult, you'll get some back. You're going to get all of it back. Right. So these skills that children develop, these motor skills and ability to move, this is brain development. That's why you can't learn this later on like you could when you were a kid. That's why it's such a crucial time. We're also seeing something that's unique to our, our time period right now, too, with child uh, children's posture. Hmm. We've never seen this before where you kids have- Kids are going to the doctor for back pain. Low back pain yeah. in, in kids. Like that, that didn't exist just a couple decades ago. And a lot of that is just how sedentary and how addicted to these iPhones and computers and iPads that we've become. And so, I, I don't know, I think more than ever, this is going to become that much. And, and video games and yep. AR and VR is getting so cool. And it's it's only becoming more immersive and it's drawing us to that direction. So I think the, the importance of the kids getting involved in sports become even more important and not just for the social psychological points you guys are making, but also the physical ones that I'm telling you yes. right now yeah. that may not be the, the top of mind conversation right now, give it five or 10 more years. 
when we've seen this play out even more yep. and watch how much more we're communicating, talking about the importance of this. And then there's a connection to just learning in general. Um, we saw the GPA score. Some people say, oh, it's because so they could stay in the sport. No, no, no. You stay in the sport at 2.0. We saw a difference uh, way above that. The, the Taking a child and having them pay attention, things like attention deficit disorder, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you see a significant improvement in symptoms when children are simply active. What's funny about this is, if you had a dog, let's say you had a lab and you kept them inside all day long and, and, and took them on one walk a day, one walk a day, and then you're back inside all day and had them watch TV and stuff. And your dog was chewing up your furniture and peeing everyone acting crazy. And you went to the vet and you said, why is my lab doing this? You'd be like, your dog needs to go outside, needs to move. Somehow we don't talk about our kids in the same way. Why is Timmy yeah. not able to pay attention? He's not doing anything but sitting in a chair almost all day long. He's either on an iPad, watch yeah. TV or he's in a classroom, and instead of medicating them, let's have them His exercise. nervous system needs the stimulus. That's right. You know, we have these sensors built in for a reason. Like, we need to use our body and, and move. It's, right. it's built into us. So before we get into the the five sports that we're going to get into, I also want to talk about the, the other end of the spectrum, which are the parents that are gung-ho about getting their kids in sports. Because this was something that I remember when we interviewed Chad Wesley, right? Chad Wesley Chad Smith. Wesley Smith. Uh -huh. Great interview. It was a long time ago. Um, uh, a brilliant coach and trainer. And I was I was under the misconception that, you know, if I wanted my son to be great at basketball or great at baseball, it's like the, the soon as you can get him into it and the more of that sport, yeah. right? It's like the, all you play is baseball. Hyper focus on yeah, that. hyper focus yeah, yeah. on it. They're 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 going to be that good, and it, this is not true because of the way that child develops mm -hmm. and how important general play and, and all the different types of movement sports. So something for the parents that definitely agree with everything that we were saying for the first ten minutes just now. This podcast, but they have like their favorite sport, right? but yeah, but then they're like, you know, Timmy is in you know baseball year round, and because I have family and friends like this, mm -hmm. and they've got young kids. And they think that he's going to become this superstar baseball player. And so they have him in year round baseball nonstop and they don't realize this, but he, Timmy would actually benefit by playing. They're limiting sport. their development by doing that. It's different than adults. So as an adult, if I wanted to get as good as I could at baseball, it would be best for me to just play baseball as much as I physically possibly could for children, because they have that window of development where the brain is developing general motor skills and intelligence, it's better to put them in multiple sports for a long time. And then far later, like around 17 or 18, having yeah. them specialize. By the, the way, data supports this. By the way, for the same point as your language argument. That's right. At an early age like that, they will pick up the ability to have, move their body in all these unique ways. Right. Yeah. And it will only add to their arsenal of them being great. Their skill at set increases the... Uh, the likelihood that a variable gets thrown at them that they'll be able to overcome is higher than one that just specialized. And the data shows this, that the kids that are in college that perform better in a specialized sport were the ones that played multiple sports as kids, not the ones that played just that sport. Which, by the way, he, he made the point of that, of he encouraged the kids play a, a minimum of two to four sports pretty much all of their life until they get out of high school. That's right. Mm -hmm. So not even specializing down to one sport until after high school. So if you have the luxury to play more than one sport, even in yeah. high school, it is more ideal for the kids. And definitely when you're talking about middle school and, and before is they should be playing as many types of sports as they possibly can as they're developing. Now, all sports, of course, so long as they're performed appropriately and whatnot, are, is going to have benefit. But we picked the five that we saw having as having some of the most benefit, and we're going to highlight the specific benefits of each of these. The first one that we listed was swimming. Now, the reason why we picked swimming as one of the first ones is because children can swim and learn how to swim before they can walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before they can even walk, they can get in water and learn how to keep themselves from drowning, how to move, how to propel themselves forward. So they're working on motor skills mm -hmm. that they normally wouldn't be able to do because they, they can't even support their own body weight. But in the water, they could. And you see this with like six-month-old and eight-month-old children in the water learning how to hold their breath, how to swim yeah. to mom and her dad. So it's like a, it's one of the earliest ways you can get them to be active and to kind of learn some of these skills an, and pick them up. It's a really interesting one to see how quickly like a a, a young kid can adapt to to swimming. It's and wild. It's 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 bizarre. But then then you see later on the longer you wait, 
how incredibly difficult yes. it is to get them to go in and the fear sets in and it's like this huge struggle to get them to learn how to swim. We this is what we went through. So it was so tough for me. I watched uh Brendan, who's his his daughter's two years younger than than Max is. And Max, when we were trying to get him into swim lessons, was right during all the COVID stuff. Mm. So we literally got our first COVID, our first, our first lesson, and then COVID hits and then it gets all shut down. And that gap of him not doing that, now trying to encourage him to do it, he's so reluctant. And he's mm -hmm. like, uh, oh, when I oh when I get bigger, daddy, I'll learn how to swim. That's what he always tries to tell me now. And seeing his daughter, who was two years younger than than Max, swimming when she was months old was just why. And if you never have Googled or got on YouTube and looked up baby swimming, it's the wildest it's, thing you've ever it's a seen. Trip. It's amazing. And not to mention there's of the you know, just the practical value of your kid knowing how to swim. It's mm -hmm. one of the leading causes of death uh, for children. Um, so it's, it's great to teach, by the way, kids do this in bathtubs. You know, if you leave a bathtub without draining it, yeah. a kid can, so you just teach them how to swim, how to maneuver in water. It's also quite safe, it, but it, the exercise component and the motor skill component, they could just do more in the water earlier than they can yeah. on land. Well, yeah, you're, and it, it, what's great about swimming too. And this is, this is beyond, we're obviously talking about, you know, infants, young children and why it's such a great sport, but why this is such a great sport, even into adulthood is like. You cover all the planes. Yeah. So your 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 body is have and and you're you're having to move the entire body from fingertips down to your toes. Every movement is Every, meeting resistance. Yes. It's, everything mm -hmm. is meeting resistance. Everything is engaged. So the the neurological benefits to that, and also the safety of that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like there's a very high reward, very low risk. Mm -hmm. Like the the in that sport, the hurting yourself or getting injured. Not that it's impossible. Like it's possible to get hurt in any sport that we do. Yeah. Anything you do, explosive or hard can you can get hurt but the likelihood of getting hurt and swimming is really really low yet it has a lot of a lot of benefits that come with totally. it totally yep. all right the next one is gymnastics now gymnastics probably one of the best things you could have your kid do to develop overall motor development overall proprioceptive mm -hmm. ability it's so dynamic there's so many positions and movements and controlling your own body I mean, I would see this as an adult when I was doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu. If somebody did gymnastics as a kid, they knew no jiu-jitsu, they moved different. Yeah. They just moved. It's almost like they already knew jiu-jitsu a little bit because of the way that they move. Well, just the capacity to place them in a position, they're going to be aware of it more likely than the other kid that hasn't done it. Yes. Like it's just, and to, to be able to move and jump and flip and um, to be able to be spatially aware and then solid and be able to create tension to be grounded at the same time. Like that's going to just translate to any other pursuit physically that you're going to do. Yeah, that's why I think you guys have to explain what proprioception means. Like, yeah. Knowing yeah. where your body awareness. is in space. Yeah. yeah. And, and just that, that point alone, the carryover to anything you would, you would do later on. I, I wish I knew this, right. Cause I was the kid oh, who same. I, I, you know, I, I picked <laughs> up sports like wakeboarding and snowboarding and I got into that stuff as I got older, like in high school, yeah. and it was such a hard learning curve for yeah. me to be comfortable with twisting and going upside down and doing all these these moves that I wanted to do because I had no experience with that and that all that tumbling and flipping and body control in space and in dynamic movements like that that you get from gymnastics. Boy, does that carry well, over into everything? Speaking else. of brain development, like uh, here's this is a sport where when you're a kid, you learn it better than when you're an adult. Like you mm -hmm. go try and do gymnastics yep. as an adult. Again, this is the fear component. There's I think fear. People really underestimate like uh, that's because if <laughs> if you're doing it now later on in life, it's you, there's all these reserves. Like I, you kind of know uh, what's going to happen if I land a little bit wrong here, or if like uh, so they're able to do it where their body's a little bit more pliable and the they're, they're, they're going to be more forgiving uh, when they. Well, go there's it. fear. There's also physics. When you're big, it's harder to do these moves anyway. That doesn't mean that. I mean, and what that means is you get to learn them as a kid, and the brain is very plastic. These are movements that if you don't instill in your brain, it will prune it out. Like there's, what, why do I need to know how to do a cartwheel or a flip? or you know land in a particular position off of jumping if i never did that before and so your brain prunes it off but gymnastics kind of solidifies it and again you talk to any coach who coaches traditional sports ask them what is your experience of people of kids that come and play the sport for the first time that also did gymnastics as kids and they'll all tell you mm -hmm. they're on a different level well also like swimming this is another thing that you can start really early too super early yeah, yeah so you can get i mean we started maxing at two years old i think it was when they first started accepting kids in gymnastics and they teach them or tumbling is what they yeah. call it at that age mm -hmm. yeah and so it's just organized play at that point 
but already getting them comfortable with climbing on things, hanging on things, rolling around like the, again, that spatial awareness. So what a great sport to keep kid, keep kids in at an early age and how much it's going to carry over to any other pursuit. Totally. Next is wrestling. Now wrestling is one of the best sports to teach your child grit and toughness. tenacity yeah. and toughness. You are, first off, it's one-on-one, -on -one, so you have to rely on just yourself. And you're being held down or manipulated or maneuvered by somebody else. And that you that is hard to overcome because it is it's as close it's like fighting right except it's not it's a, it's it's wrestling but you have to be tough and you have to get through that and you have to be able to get your butt kicked and bounce back wrestling does that now the other component of it is it's a sport with some self defense carryover mm -hmm. like your kid learns how to wrestle and they're going to be far better off uh, if something ever happens where they need to defend themselves boy or girl oh. so it's got that carryover huge as well. confidence builder yes. yeah yeah when you have those type of skills in you know, now it's it it's interesting because it would be like a great follow up from um, gymnastics because of your spatial awareness, your explosivity, and like you're able, you're able to kind of find where you are and be able to leverage that uh, against your opponent. And so now like, there's a physical strength component there that's you know opposing a force yes. as opposed to just like the gravity, uh, for instance. That's why I mean I love pairing this with gymnastics because gymnastics first gives you that great foundation and then now wrestling you now have that expression of that right and and you have an opposing force that's challenging that so it's great you understand your body and space and awareness and you can tumble and flip and you do this now how do you do when someone's pressing on you or grabbing or pulling like you not only have to have that same body awareness and control but also the strength yeah. and power to a lot match more conditioning that. and endurance well yeah. it's, it's also it's this is a great way to train your ego it really is like yeah. you could be in a difficult challenge challenging position do you know swimming where you're tired and or cycling where you're exhausted or you know playing another sport or maybe you're on a team and they're beating you but to be physically held down or have someone physically beat you uh it's an ego check and this is an important one a lot of people think oh what do you mean you're getting beat up no no this is an important one there's a lot of tough guys out there for example that have never really gotten their their butt kicked and that's good. You don't need to get your butt kicked out in the street, but on the wrestling mat, it's it's interesting. You meet people who wrestle for a living and who, oh, not for a living, but for a long time, who are really good at it. They're humble. Mm -hmm. They're humble because their ego is checked constantly in yeah. practice. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the skill and technique that you learn from it. That There's also a confidence with that, too. So you you brought something up that, and not that we're encouraging anybody by any means to be fighting or anything, but I mean, I've never... I've never been in a fight in my life that didn't end up on the ground. Yeah. Yep. So having that skill set to be as far as defending yourself, like well, everybody, you know, you see stuff on YouTube and clips of kids swinging on each other, but most all street fights or scuffles end up on the ground and your quickly, ability. Yeah. yeah. So your ability to wrestle well, somebody or gain control in a situation. Like I'll that. say for, for girls, this is a very important skill because it, you know, if a young lady's assaulted, she's put on the ground. Yeah. If she knows how to wrestle, she may know how to get up and escape, mm -hmm. which is, you know, again, in that, in that particular scenario, very important. All right, next up, track and field. Here's, the, here's something that's interesting just to kind of think about, ponder. There, there's a few things that humans evolved to do physically very well. We're not the strongest. We're not the fastest. Like, you put us, you know, against most animals, and, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not very good, okay, at things that are physical. We're very smart, obviously. But there's two things that we do exceptionally well in comparison to any other animal. One is throw with accuracy. And the other one is run. We're actually made to run. Not fast, but long. Humans can out-trek almost any animal. In fact, this is how hunter-gatherers, uh, modern hunter-gatherers, and we we estimate you know ancient ones, caught their prey. We would we wound it and we'd run after it until it got tired. And then we would take it down. And if you look at the physiology of the human body with our big glutes, our big knee joints, we have this this foot that's covered in muscle and this ankle and these calves that are like like uh, you know shock absorbers. We are literally made to run. Here's the problem: we stop running. Yeah, we suck at it, and we we <laughs> lost the skill forever. And yeah. then people lace up their running shoes when they're 30 years old to get in better shape. And now running has more injuries than any other sport uh, that you can put. In fact, if you look it up, people run, hurt themselves all the time. Yep. So this is a skill that if you lose it, good luck trying to gain it back. So track and field for a kid is like, let's keep the skill of, of being able to run. No, I, most sports, especially team sports, when we get to that point, uh, require some set of running skills. In yeah. fact, a high level of, of running skills, which is also why 
a lot of times you'll find a lot of your pro athletes, pro football players, pro basketball, pro so also have a track and field background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's because they've mastered the art of running. And then they also love to play with this ball sport, you know? Mm-hmm. And so it carries over into those sports. And when you start to get to the highest level, right? When we're talking about professional sports, it comes down to like a fraction of a second difference of what sometimes gets you picked or gets you drafted right like when you run the combine and you are tracked on time or you're 40 and stuff like that your ability to be able to sprint in that dash with yeah. great form and technique makes a huge difference one, if you're getting one picked of the up biggest attributes now in almost all sports is speed yep. and so you know in order to learn speed and how to move most effectively mechanically like this is going to be your best bet with learning uh, you know, those traits through track and field. That's right. And then track and field, of course, also, I think to an extent teaches tenacity differently than wrestling. Uh, but more so like you're fighting against your own physical pain and elements and you're learning like, okay, especially the long distance stuff. Like how do I persevere? Is there carryover to that in everyday life? You better believe it. Right. Mm-hmm. There's something that's unique about every, so the, you know, we do, we're doing five of these, right? This is a four and everything that we've named so far is an individual sport. That's right. And, uh, and we obviously talked about all the value that that brings. And I think that in a, in a perfect world where you're, you're cycling a kid through most, all of these are keeping them involved in most of these, but then the fifth one, um, team sports. Yes. You know, the traditional one, soccer, basketball, football, baseball, extremely, extremely valuable. It's, it's, it's funny because you talk to anybody who, who there's a lot of, there's a lot of adult friends that I have that literally say to me, uh, sports, organized sports, football or basketball or baseball saved their life that they didn't have a good home life or whatever, mm-hmm. but it was the team sport and the coach. And it was, it gave them a the sense outlet. of belonging and family. This teaches you how to play by the rules, how to value, not cheating, how to have pride in doing things with integrity, how to win, how to lose, um, how to sit back and step forward. Team sports uh, do this incredibly well in a very controlled, easy to observe manner. You know, life, it's, you know, you look at a CEO making tons of money and from the outside, you might be like, oh, he was just put in that position or whatever, because we can't see everything he did for the last, you know, or she did for the last 15, 20 years to get there. But you watch, uh, you play a game and it's out there for people to see like how hard you worked, what you did, kind of character you have. And team sports exemplifies that. Yeah, I think too, like what I like about it is your peers are really like, it's self-regulating. Yeah. So yeah, your coach is there and wants order and wants to make sure everybody's, you know, going in the direction that, you know, the team needs to go. But at the end of the day, when you're competing and you're out there together as a unit, um, you know, it's if if you're being an asshole and you're the one that's like, you know, constantly – uh, taking the ball and not, you know, distributing it, not making the best play efforts to to the person that you know is going to uh, provide the most successful uh, plan. Uh, they're going to just naturally stop getting the ball, you know. And it's 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 just it's it's a nice uh, way of integrating with other kids and other uh, people to to be able to figure out, okay. If, you know, yes, I want to lead, but also too, I need to kind of, I need to play with, I need people. to play. I need yeah. to be likable. I need to, <laughs> I need to do things with grace, you know? And so it, it's, it's a, it's a really hard lesson, uh, but it's, it's the best to, to receive from your peers as opposed to an adult. Well, it, it resembles it, of all the sports we've, we're talking about. It resembles real life the most. Totally. Cause and, life is not solo, right? No. And, and that's right. And you brought up a point. It's actually one of my biggest pet peeves when I get into it with people that love to, critique CEOs on the outside and, Oh, he's this and he's that. And it's just like, man, the ability to get tens or hundreds or thousands of people to move cohesively in the same direction is a massive skill, a massive skill, or to even have people underneath you that work for you that do that for you is a massive skill to be able to do that. It takes teamwork to be able to develop a a skill like that. And so, and then you're going to get that with school. You're going to get that everywhere you go in life is you're going to have to learn. And what I love about sports too, Justin, you made the point of like the the self-regulating ego check. Eventually you will meet someone who is better than you. 
Yes. Like yes. you may be yes. the shit in your hometown, yep. but eventually you keep yep. climbing the, the ranks. It will humble you. And you will eventually meet someone who is better than you. And there is something so humbling and and such a good lesson in that. And, and when you're in team sports, you can have sometimes that kid who's like the superstar early on. And so maybe he gets a bit of an ego. He's cocky early on because he goes through the sport really easy. But eventually he'll climb the ladder to a point where he's playing with all the other cocky shits that were just as good as he was in their hometown. And then you get humble well, really what's fast. Great, what's great yeah. about this is with, for your kids, they learn this in a game. If they don't learn this in a game, they're going to learn this when the stakes are really high. Like your kid acts like a jerk in a game. Like what's the worst that could happen? Uh, you know, kicked off the team at the absolute worst, or probably the kids will say something. Coach will have to coach them. Have to work with them. They'll sit out something like that. Right? They never learn this playing sports, and they just go through life, and then they get a job, and then they go work in a place, and then they act that way because they never learned this through playing organized sports or, or team sports. Like you ain't working. Nobody likes you. You don't have any friends or yeah, whatever. So. Yeah. These are lessons you can learn uh, as a kid that you, that develop you into a better human being. So yeah. there you have it. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. We have free fitness guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. Adam. 